Hello. Some of us cannot see God for organization. When we were in God's organization, we couldn't separate it from God. And when we leave, we often still can't. Losing faith in the org, for too many of us, is a total loss. The organization sinks out of sight, so does God. German Christians lost the vision of God during the Hitler era. Remember, David could not see Goliath because he was too busy staring at God. But not so King Saul and the armies of Israel. They couldn't see God for Goliath. So it was that millions of Germans equated their faith in Hitler and the Nazi cause with faith in God and made the mistake of going to war in the name of God for the Nazi cause. God was invisible while Israel stared at Goliath and invisible while Germany stared at Hitler. While Hitler was in power, Germany was indestructible. So fused were God and the Fuhrer. Born in Nuremberg, Germany, Gerhard von Rath, Old Testament theology. Born in Nuremberg, Germany, yes, that same Nuremberg where Hitler and the Nazis held their incredible rallies, which are immortalized in the Leni Riefenstahl movie, Triumph of the Will, by the way, which you can see on YouTube. And the same Nuremberg where later Nazi leaders were tried for their war crimes their sins against humanity. Von Rad was a Old Testament professor at the University of Jena during the Nazi era when it was not fashionable, not just not fashionable to teach the Old Testament, but was downright hmm, suspicious because after all the Old Testament now viewed from a Nazi perspective was an artifact of the despised Jews. It was Gerhard von Rad's privilege to bring the Old Testament back to its divine status in Germany and the rest of the German-speaking world after World War II. Von Rad became one of the greatest Old Testament scholars of the 20th century. As a historian of the history of Israel, he saw what most Israelites would not have seen, that Israel has endured. The empires they so feared have not. The Goliaths which caused Israel to quail and quake throughout most of the time the time they had in the land of promise have perished from the earth. But Israel, even out of her land, has survived seven empires. But did Israel have the faith to know that even as each successive Goliath appeared on the horizon, they would have nothing to fear because they had something none of the empires did have. In Old Testament theology, von Rad has a chapter on the 8th century prophets. These great prophets, Isaiah, Hosea, Amos, and Micah, called Israel to faith from fear, to look with eyes of faith, not the eyes of flesh. Only by faith, faith fed by the knowledge of God, specifically the history of God's dealings with men, could Israel see God, who was even bigger than Goliath. Yes, even bigger than Egypt or Assyria. Listen to what von Rad says about what a knowledge of history and what, what is called by historians and students of history, historiography. Israel was the first nation to, to develop the science of history. And of course that science centered around their own history. He talks about, von Rad talks about the 8th century prophets in these terms. Amos's poem is full of growing amazement at Israel's failure to understand this language which her God spoke in her history. Isaiah went even further in asserting that Yahweh's action in history is plain to see. When an ordinary individual is confronted with the might of an empire, he can see nothing beyond it, and so is faced with the problem of reconciling its war potential with God's omnipotence. The prophet sees things quite differently. The empires on the Tigris and on the Nile are absolutely nothing. They are no more than a borrowed tool in the hand of Yahweh. Though it is true that from the beginning of the monarchical period, Israel began to take a more secular and realistic view of history, this does not mean that history had correspondingly moved away from God. On the contrary, in the older historical tradition, we look in vain for evidence of such a conception of God as, as given here, that is in the 8th century prophets. 
one in which he, fulf he fills the whole realm of history and reduces the mightiest factors of the political world to insignificance. As Hosea says, I, even I, rend, that is, tear, and go away, I carry off, and none rescues. We may therefore describe the characteristic feature of the prophetic view of history as follows. Not only does it recognize most clearly Yahweh's designs and intentions in history, it also sees the various historical forces involved in quite a different light from other people. So what is the consequence of the neglect of history? In our own day, we face that question directly because un unlike Israel in the Old Testament or the church for most of its history, we purposefully neglect secular history and even sacred history, specifically the Old Testament. So what is the consequence of that neglect? Well, if we neglect history, specifically sacred history, Empire is all we can see. All we are able to see on the horizon is the principalities and, and powers. And not seeing God, because we see Goliath so clearly, we lose the vision of God. We are ruled not by faith, not by God, but by fear. Gerhard von Rad, Old Testament Theology. 